all the big calls on all the big races. Yes, that's it. Back from a week away in the sunshine, Dave Orton, for one week only, looking like he's got half a tan. Delighted to be back with you after a sterling effort last week, wasn't it, from Bruce Mennington sitting in this seat. It's Bruce's turn to go off into the sunshine. Well deserved after that Richard Hughes interview. Rather explosive stuff there. Perhaps just when you're tempted to think this is the lull in the current flat season, of course, we come bouncing back with a Group 1 at Haydock. We'll be popping to Kempton as well, getting the naps from the panellists. Myself, Dave Orton. Joined by the anti-postman, you know when you hear the big calls in the big races, that's the highlight oh, of your week. The isn't big it? call, yeah, we, we shout that around the office sometimes. Do you know? A couple of us, yeah. Hoping that I will. Appear. I wish I had my own catchphrase like you did. D there's time for you. Yeah, you are, I, your I, stock I, is rising. I'd like to think so. Yeah. I noticed you said you were tanned earlier. I'm not seeing that at all. I don't hey, know. Hey, you came like. back from Mykonos looking like your t-shirt. What are you talking about? Yeah, I know you're still this, upset with this me. This is about still that. hanging about, mate. <laughs> so <laughs> that came off in the shower this morning, didn't it? You had to reapply, Come on. probably. Come all on. right. Okay. Look, this is the sort of <laughs> this is the sort of tempo you get from me and Robbie, the anti-post yeah. man. You've yep. been looking at the big sprint. Don't give it away. I've yet. had a right old look up. Yeah, like a couple in that. Love but, it. Uh, I mean, now we've got the draw, so. Oh, yeah. I'm, maybe I'm maybe I'm jumping ship, but we'll have to see, won't we? I hope your legion of followers are watching this. Because <laughs> oh, they're a legion of followers. I well, don't know. Well, you'll be getting hate mail in otherwise if you, yeah, if bring you put it something up. You bring put two up there, haven't you? Back. Yeah, I have, yeah. Okay, let's go back up to Stoke. He's there in situ from our sponsors, Bet365. It's only Patrick Cooney. Yes, uh, hello everyone, and uh, really looking forward to this September. All the stars will be out, won't they? And uh, can't wait for it. Cracking weekend ahead as well. There was a bit of a lull last weekend, wasn't there? Perhaps not the worst one for me to be away, but I thought too much was said about the fact that it was a bit of a moderate, uh, you know, sort of like, I don't know, let's go and have a barbecue instead Saturday. I'm not sure about that, but this weekend, no hiding place. Will you be at Haydock? Uh, I will be, yes, indeed, yes. And the weather should be OK. I think there's a few showers forecast, but we're currently good to firm, good in places, so... I think it's uh, no excuses ground in the big one. That's what we want, isn't it? Absolutely. Of course, no excuses at Kempton where it will be standard to slow on the poly track. Some cracking racing there. But let's have a look exactly what we've got coming up for you on this weekend show. So, Adam Ryan, assistant to Father Kevin. Big weekend for the yard, going for another Sprint Cup at Haydock. Joins us on the show. Adam, a regular, of course. Loads of in-depth uh, analysis there from Adam and some real interesting horses elsewhere from the yard this Saturday. We'll also be looking at the big race previews. Five coming your way. Don't you worry about that. Before the all-important weekend winners. Well, thrilled to welcome back to What's a Shout viewers for the first time in 2022. It's Adam Ryan, assistant to Father Kevin. Let's go up to their Thursk base then, because another big weekend comes up for the yard. Just, Adam, the defence of the Sprint Cup at Haydock. How you doing, my man? Morning, Dave. How you doing? Um, yep. Yeah. Really excited for this weekend. Um, you know, it's always nice to go back and try and defend the crown. So, um, you know, looking forward to a, a, a busy weekend. You'll be thrilled to know that Graham Robway isn't on this uh, interview, Adam, to tell you that yours is aren't that good or whatever, or one's going to beat you and all that sort of stuff. I've spared you that one. I have got a stat, though, Adam. We'll obviously do the Sprint Cup in its entirety because it's not just Emirati you've got in that, of course. Uh, the last horse, in fact, the only horse to ever win it back-to-back -back was the first ever couple of runnings of the race in 66-67, a crack sprinter called Be Friendly. You're not worried about that, though, of course. No, they, they, they always say records are there to be broken, aren't they? So uh, it's, it's, it's obviously very difficult um, in, in that sort of company, but he's he, he's the previous one. He goes in great form, so fingers crossed for a big run. We haven't been able to get you in the studio in 2022, Adam. There's still time. Let's talk about the year just quickly going forward. I said to you when we set up this interview in the week, has it been a slightly quieter year? That's because I'm used to seeing you on Saturday front pages. We agreed, didn't we? I mean, you sort of came back at me a little bit. You're still over a million in prize money, plenty of winners on the board. And, of course, you've lost a few stars. Yeah, you know, obviously Brando and Glass Slippers were, you know, two two flag bearers for the yard. So it's it's always hard to replace them. You know, thankfully this fella uh, stepped up last year and, you know, put another group one on the board, which is important. Uh, um, and you know, he, he's he's in great form now. Looks like he could do again potentially. So, um, and you know, there's some nice two year olds coming through. Um, you know, I think uh, we didn't really have any real sharp five furlongs or uh, two year olds. So it, it's taken a little bit of time for them to hit the board but um there's one or two that step forward now and, and look potentially quite smart so uh 
you know, there's, there's still plenty of racing left. And um, and also on Saturday, we get to see Triple Time back in action. And, you know, obviously that was a, a big boost to the yard to see him back. Well, he obviously sprung onto everyone's notebooks when he won uh, the Ascendant Stakes, uh, which is on this card, viewers, of course, uh, last year. You've got Captain Winters for the same connections, of course, in that. Of course, the Shaco Bade family we know very well. Came good at the third time of asking. You beat a hot pot with triple time in the race last year. Cadolphin have got another one. How are we fancying our chances of lightning striking twice? Yeah, you know, obviously, uh, very similar sort of profile to um, to, to his half brother there. A um, little bit of a different model to to Triple Time, but listen, he's done nothing wrong. Um, you know, the, the the mayor's been an absolute superstar for Sheikh Mohammed Abed, um, and you know he deserves his chance in it. Uh, obviously, he's going to have to take another step forward. But uh, the great thing with uh, the progeny from Ream Three, the dam, is that they do tend to get better with racing and, and, and time. So, you know, hopefully he, he can take another step forward and give a, a good account of himself. He's, of course, from the same family as uh, Triple Time as well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, the, the dam Ream Three, um, she's been an absolute superstar for for, for the owner. And, um, you know, for, you've also got Triple Time from a, a likes of Kate Byron. And, you know, whatever she seems to produce seems to be. Um, very, very classy, so uh, hopefully he can take another step forward and it'd be fantastic to go and replicate his brother. Yeah, so listen, it could be a big half an hour for you because the half-brother, the aforementioned triple time, comes out. I mean, I, I, honestly, Adam, I don't know how people caught wind of me doing this interview this week, but I've had a lot of big people in racing who said, can you ask Apple, can you ask Adam, please, about triple time? Where's he been? Why was he off? We thought this might be a guinea, maybe a derby horse, and here he is coming back in the superior mile. Yeah, he um, he just got a little bit of setback there. We we did a piece of work with him uh, down at Newmarket, and unfortunately, he just had a little bit of a, a setback. So, was he missed the guineas, and you know, from that point, uh, for the three year olds, the classics are huge, and uh, we you know, we were really looking forward to running him in the guineas. But uh, following that, you know, there was no rush with him then. Um, obviously, he's missed the classics, so we said, listen, give him plenty of time. Um, you know. It, Right, if he needs four weeks, we'll give him ten. You know, it's uh, with a, with a horse of his capabilities. Um, so he's he, he's been given the time there. There's been no rush with him, um, and you know, in hindsight, it might actually be beneficial for him. You know, that extra time to grow and strengthen and, and mature again. Um, obviously, he's had a long that long time in between racing. Um, it would be a year to the day near enough uh, since he won the Ascendant Stakes. So. Uh, Whatever he does on Saturday, he's certainly going to improve for. But, you know, he's a horse we've got a lot of faith in, and, and um, he does look very high class. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people will be, will be expecting triple time to need the run, Adam. But I've just looking at the final field here. He's drawn in two. You've got Reach for the Moon. Uh, a two year old, let's face it, didn't deliver and is now um, wearing a first time visor. You've got Bayside Boy, who again ran in the Dewhurst and stuff, but looked like he's had trouble training on. He's got first time blinkers. I don't know. If, if, if he's ready to do himself justice, you can have another one next to your name, potentially. I mean, ability-wise, he, you know, he's certainly uh, a horse that we think is, is capable of, uh, of winning and, and going further than, further than this, you know, in, in grade. But, uh, listen, it's, it, he's, he's fit and he's well, and he looks in great order. But, um, you know, it, there's, not, there's nothing counts more than race fitness. So, uh, is if, if if he runs well on, on Saturday, we'd be delighted. And whatever he does, he will improve from. Um, but uh, you know, it's just great to see him back on the track. Playing it down then a little bit, and unsurprisingly so. But no Aldari in there on Saturday. He might would have been a hot pot. I don't know. Let us know, viewers. What do you think? Is he going to go close on Saturday? All right, so maybe all about, you know, what's to lie ahead for triple time. Let's have a little talk about thundering, if you don't mind, Adam. A horse is really on a roll. Love this bloke. Typical Ryan sort of grinding, handicapper, looking to make up the next step. And, of course, a stiffer test awaits now. Yeah, he, um, he's a bit of a slow burner, you know. Um, I, I think some of his novice and maiden form was, was exceptional. Uh, you know, he just seems to keep bumping into one or two. Um, I was I was always under the opinion that he would be a better horse once he gets into better races, and uh, I think he sort of showed that at, uh, at York there. Uh, I think he's a horse that wants a, a real end-to-end -end gallop, and uh, but you saw that day he's still he's still a work in progress. Um, you know he still hasn't really learned how to race properly. Um, you know, but once it was just turned in there when the pace quickened, he was just rolling about underneath Josephine a little bit, and uh, I think that's probably what cost him. Um, the win that day 
But I do think that uh, moving forward, he, he could be a really nice horse next year. Um, he's going to keep improving the racing. And I think mentally, once he matures, uh, he could be a very nice prospect. Uh, you know, hopefully, maybe developing something along the lines of an Evo horse. Ah, uh, there we go. Of course, this is another future e balls trial. Like we just had the Mel Rawls, of course. This is all about the e ball. Yo, everyone loves this chap. He's got top weight, but he's racing against his own age group again. He's bound to be there or thereabouts if he stays. Let's go for the biggie then, Adam. Um, the defence, that you know, the trophy has been sitting in Hamilton <laughs> all this 12 months. Uh, the draw is out now. We've seen it. Emiratiana then, you took him to Dubai. Let's not forget, viewers, that this was the best of the British at the Breeders' Cup last year, this chap. He was on a real roll. He, of course, finished second in an unthought battle. He then went and saw off Starman. Everyone went to ADOC expecting Starman to sign off his career. You got the better of him there. This season, it's fair to say that taking him to Dubai, I know we've spoken about this uh, uh, before, the ground wasn't quite in your favour from memory, and it's taken him a little while to come back. It has, and um, you know. But to be fair, he was. He, he, some horses take to, some horses don't, and uh, I, I just don't think uh, it was his cup of tea, really. Uh, obviously, it's taken him a little bit of time to come back to form, but I think, you know, even if you look at um, previous years, he seems to do better this sort of time of year. Um, you know, obviously last year he won the conditions race at Hamilton, then went and finished second at uh, in the non top and went on to win this. So. It's been pretty much a similar sort of route. Um, I think his running in top was probably very similar to the run last year. Uh, so he goes there in great order. You know, touch wood, the ground's going to be uh, ideal for him as it is at the minute. And, you know, realistically, there's, although it is, it's, it's obviously a very good race, but there's only two group one winners in the field and he's one of them. So, you know, he's got to, he's got to go there with a big chance. Yeah, absolutely. And you get the feeling he's going to be really well tipped up. People are going to go to Haydock on Saturday to see him. Loads of pressure there, I guess. He's in stall 13. It's the kind of headache you want, isn't it? Let's face it. You want, you've got Brad the Brief two next door to you. And another horse you've got in the race, we absolutely love her. She was a, she was a two-year-old bursting to be a three-year-old. She's obviously had a few old ups. We saw her running on in the Commonwealth Cup. She just didn't fire. Maybe the bounce factor next time at York. We've still got faith in Hala Hala Athmani. Yeah, the um, I think it, it, she ran a, a, a fantastic race at, at, uh, at Ascot, and um, for whatever reason, she just didn't fire at York. I think um, you know you, that can happen at York. You've got to, uh, quite a long walk over and everything, um, and maybe a bit of a bounce back factor uh, having so long in between races. But isn't she a filly that's going to keep improving this year? Um, you know, and I think. You know the connections. Uh, you know, Jamie and Dollar There, I think she's worth a, uh, worth having a go at something like this. Um, we certainly think she's capable ability-wise. Uh, just hopefully she can bounce back to some form now. And it'd be no surprise to see her run run a massive race. But obviously she does need to take a big step forward on on uh, her own form. She's a massive girl, isn't she? That's why we love her here at the Racing Post. And uh, again, is she one that you've really got a four-year-old eye on? Because she'd be the next sort of slippers, hopefully. Uh, yeah, I mean, she she uh, obviously she's a half sister to uh, Hello Yumzay who won this race, and um, I think he 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 continued to improve with racing, and I think she she will do herself. And like you say, she she is a fair fair size of a of a filly, so uh, you know she's likely racing. You could you could easily see some some big improvement from her. All right, Adam, thanks for talking to us about your Haydock runners. I think we, you've given us such an in-depth preview as usual. You're getting used to this gig with me now, Adam, <laughs> of course. You know what to do. We don't need to ask you about your best bets there. You've got a couple of runners at Thirsk, obviously. Anything in particular we should be looking at there for our viewers? Yeah, the, um, the Philly transfer affection there. Um, she ran she ran at Doncaster in only a three-runner race, but I'd say it was actually quite a good uh, good race in the end. Um, you know, she, she went close to beating the hot pot of... Um, the, the Johnson's horse, uh, so I think uh, she 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 must go there with a big shout. Um, and then we've got an interesting newcomer there, um, Coolcore, who uh, has been bought from the horse and trained south from Ireland. Uh, he looks like a, a horse that uh, a three other could could improve off his mark. Uh, quite an interesting uh, new recruit. So it'd be it'd be nice to see him out on the track and you know get an idea of just just where he could go.
Yeah, he is interesting. He's in the Frank Gillespie colours, of course. We had to get in a mention of the great Gatsby, didn't we, in those famous <laughs> colours. Don't worry, <laughs> ring the bell. And 141 for transfer affection then. Adam, great to talk to you. You get the feeling that the season's really just waiting for you to grab it by the horns. Maybe get, you know, hopefully another Group 1 on Saturday. We've got the Air Gold Cup meeting coming up as well. Dare I ask, how is he? I'm guessing you're talking about Bielsa, uh, as soon as you wrote him off after five strides last year. Hey, hang um, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That was Rob Way. We've, we've deleted him from this show. <laughs> no, he, um, yeah, he's in good order. The, uh, to be fair, the, the plan after his last run was just to, to head straight to, uh, you know, um, I think he, 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 he enjoys a bit of juice in the ground. Uh, obviously, the way the weather's been recently, um, there's plenty of options, but I don't think it suits him. So, again, we decided to just go straight back there. He um, obviously he won it last year, and you know I think he goes there. We'll, we'll go there in, in good order again. So would have to have a, a big chance of defending his crown as well. Yeah, look out for that. It's not too far off, viewers. All right, yeah. Adam is referring to the fact that when Bielsa went on the, on the stands rail last year, I was actually live covering it and I went, that's it. Poor old Bielsa and let alone what happened. He goes and takes the money back. He's a great horse. Adam, always an absolute pleasure. Uh, all the best to you and the family up there and good luck on Saturday, man. Cheers, thank you very much. Right then. The moment you've been waiting for. Not the naps. No, no. Let's go through some in-depth races for you. Let's go up to Haydock then, Pat. The 145 is the superior mile. No Aldari, which I think a lot of people were hoping to see, of course, the Shabwell understudy for Baid. I don't know, but he's not there. So it's last year's two-year-olds that we want to concentrate on. Who's going to be the most fancied of them? Well, I would imagine Reach for the Moon is going to be a very, very popular horse in the market. Um, of course... The last time we saw this fellow was at Royal Ascot and he managed to get beat at five to two on. But that was the nightmare day for Frankie, wasn't it? He got beat on Stradivarius, just got chinned in the handicap after that. And we all thought, well, reach for the moon or win, that'll cheer him up. And it just simply didn't happen. I, I thought he never looked like winning from start to finish, really. But that was over 10 furlongs and maybe he just emptied out and didn't get the 10 furlongs. You can understand why Connections went for the race because it looked an absolute egg and spoon race, didn't it? Uh, but he managed to get beat. He's got a first-time visor tomorrow. At first glance, I thought, this is one you can take on. But if you give him a pass on that Royal Ascot run and assess him on all the other form, he's the best horse in the race in theory. I just look at the other three-year-old, triple time. Now, he, 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 he was a very talented two-year-old as well. So I would definitely be interested in what Adam Ryan has to say about his chances. We've not seen him for 364 days. If he's ready to roll, he might just be the value. But I think Reach for the Moon, the public will latch on to him again. Frankie's up there. You can just see it now, can't you? Flying dismounts as well. Well, back to a mile, of course. Uh, you love this horse, don't you, Reach for the Moon? Because... Nah. No, no, listen. Please. No, come on. Bear with me here. I don't, just don't put words in my mouth, man. No, I, I know you're not tipping him. Yeah. But you love this horse because you were on Claymore, of course, at oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. When That's the whole right, yeah. world thought yeah, Reach like, for the Moon was going to do it. So you, he's a big friend of yours. because yeah, he, exactly, he, yeah. He I sunk. told you. I, I might not get it right at the time, but normally if I say a horse is good, they end up being good, all right? <laughs> Noted. <laughs> okay. Noted. You know... But the thing about Reach for the Moon is uh, people seem to be forgetting that Bayside Boy already had his number at Doncaster last year. I don't understand the disparity in price, really. I mean, it's all about this horse like Derby horse earlier in the year. Uh, everything pointed towards him improving for the step up in trip. And they're bringing him back to a mile. I'm not so sure about this. I think he looks sure. I thought Odari would beat him, but he's obviously mm. not turning up. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing with him. Maybe well, they just the, want I think more the, cut they the ground. definitely want cutting the ground. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. has got a bit of form on just good ground, though. But. Uh, yeah, I think Bayside Boy, I've uh, got a stat for you. I did, I did some research uh, into sires who do well in the autumn. And a new, new Bay progeny really outperform their expected wins sort of ratio. Do you think so, that's because uh, they pound the ground? Yep. I like saying that, so. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a nice phrase, yeah. It's, it's but, a good uh, yeah, I, I just think there's too big a disparity between them, so mm. Bayside Boy. Yeah, I was not going to tip triple time. Having spoken to Adam, and uh, uh, look, that. They've just given him time. There's nothing too serious. Of course, he won on this day pretty much this weekend anyway last year. He's in stall two. Stall two have won the last couple of runnings of this. And he obviously loves Haydock. The ground will be absolutely fine. Reach for the moon is going to be one of the big mustard horses of the day. He's going to be, you either love it spicy 
or you're going to be spitting it out. Yeah. Okay, at the I end. love it, but For, well, so do yeah. I. But I'm not sure about. I, I think he probably is a minor. If you look at that Hamden courts, he goes away and then yeah. he curls up. But now they're putting the visor on, so they're playing with our minds here. Yeah, I don't. Really the get visor it. wasn't on. I think people would be more confident. He's in all three under Frankie. Bayside boy, I backed him last time. He did disappoint me. Mm. I understand the head care there. So that was Jim, fast ground though. I, mean, I think it is going to. One thing to say, I know it's good to throw at the moment, but there is rain on Saturday, quite yeah. a lot of it. He was. So uh, he, he, he was better than he showed us at James Palace. So a tricky race then, the 145. Uh, Jim Cruddy, of course, now gets onto the Hunt Cut win at Dark Shift. Who are you fancying? Let's move on, shall we, Pat? Because it's a September States coming up next at Kempton. Yeah, and this is a decent looking race. It's held up quite well, really, with uh, eight runners. It's a Group Three. Market leader is undeniably going to be due by honour of William Haggis. Uh, best in on the race on official ratings. The last time we saw him, of course, was at York behind Bayeed, so we can excuse him finishing fourth there. He's just got a high level of form, hasn't he? Last October, he was second in the champion stakes at Ascot. Um, so he, he's got that almost group one look about him. I'd expect him to go very well here. The only caveat I would say, he's not run on the all-weather before, but I'm sure he's got uh, plenty of practice on it at home. The second favourite, as things stand at the moment, is Mush to death, who... Really ran too bad to be true last time at Newmarket. I was there. Connections were very confident. He finished last at six, so definitely too bad to be true. We've not seen him for those 58 days. So if you pretend he didn't run last time out, then he's very much a legitimate danger. Only a pound behind the favourite on official ratings. But you look at Jibayana, he's the class act in the race. I think he'll be another very, very well back favourite. This is a more competitive edition than normal. You remember yeah. Enable used to rock up here pre arc and have a mm. stroll through the park. She beat Crystal Ocean that, yep. that year. Do you remember? Uh, a couple yeah. of horses coming back then with a bit to prove. Some classy runs. Third Realm's classy, of course. Yeah. Um, some horses that might want further, calling the win. Gear up came came good again last time. Where are we looking? Yeah, it is a good race, isn't it? I was trying so hard to get Dubai on a beaten. I mean, he's, he's been beaten by Sir Busker in his last two starts. Like, He's not, he's not unbeatable in don't, this. But don't knock the Sir Busker. I like, I like Busker, but come on, mm. come on. I mean, well, he, but the thing is, he gets three pounds from horses he's rated higher than, and just, I mean, I, I, I did quite like Third Realm initially though, but he put in a real stinker last time at Song Clue, and then he's the good with form the time before. He looked visually good, but it's worked out pretty terribly to be right. honest. So. I wanted to get Dubai on a beat, but I don't think I can. I think he's going to be fine over a mile four, so he's the selection for me. OK, yeah, Dubai on the ground was quicker than I wanted when he was just nutted by Sir Busker that Robbie was alluded to there. Obviously, last time, this is much easier. Mossadaf is interesting, isn't he? He's a course winner, sort of, you know, he's drawn his stall eight, probably will be all right because they're attacking him. Does he quite get a mile four? I'm going to go for my old friend, no surprises here, Solid Stone. This time he went on his lovely roll last year. He ran really well, I thought, at Royal Ascot, considering, you know, he did plenty early on. He still hasn't quite shown he wants his trip, but on a course he's got format. It's two from four in your weather. He's going to be the each way play for me at seven. Let's stay at Kempton then, Pat. We've got a very competitive handicap coming up at 2.40. Yeah, and we can't use the excuse we've not seen the run round Kempton before these horses. I think of the 15 runners, 13 of them have actually won round Kempton before. So a lot of course form to be looking at. It's the final of the race, so you know plenty of homework we can look at there. The market at the moment, Morgan Ferry or William Haggis has been popular in the market as his first few, first few interesting. And then I thought he was a little bit unlucky over 10 furlongs last time out, dropping back to a mile. Maybe things might happen a bit too fast and furious there. I'm going against the stats here. The three-year-olds haven't won this race for, uh, if at all, but certainly for the last 10 years. But I like the three-year-old, my mate Ted here, who I think he was quite impressive over course and distance last time. Roger Teal, John Egan aboard. You might need a couple of cracks at this one, but my mate Ted, he just looks that one who suddenly improved on the face of it, looked quite improved on this surface last time. So my mate Ted for me. He's a horse that's been suffering with the dry summer, Pat, and they switched him to the all-weather yeah. last time and he, he had to be hauled in by the stewards to say, where's the improvement come from? That's why. Uh, we're agreeing here. Full seldom differ. Yeah. Take it uh, away. First view for me. I think he is favourite, though. But... Uh... He just reminds me a bit of Bedouin's story last year, Saeed's uh, Cambridge, Cambridgeshire winner. Take that I, in think, this race. I think he's being aimed at that and he's going to have to go up a bit to ensure he gets in. Uh, but he's got an interesting profile. I mean, he was a good run in the John Smith's Cup last time. I didn't think he necessarily really got the trip there. I thought he'd, I think he'd be fine over this drop to a mile. I like the jockey, Christian Howarth. He's having quite a good season, good value for the five. Um, yeah, interesting horse. One over the course and distance, but I mean, as Pat pointed out, a lot of course for me. 
But uh, yeah, it's competitive, but he's the one that caught my eye. Yeah, he, he qualified for this when he got nutted on his return. He ran a massive race on a horse called Encouraged of James Fanshaw's with SDS on, and Christian Howard was on him that day. They put cheap pieces on him as well. In the John Smith Cup you alluded to, he was wide, wasn't he? Yeah. He did best of those that were up there, I think. Yeah. This is his, this is his uh, to lose, I think. Yeah. So from stall seven, hopefully Christian we'll Howard hopefully does the steering. Lots of good horses there, though, of course. Uh, where are we going next then? We're going back up to Haydock, are we? Yep, uh, it's the uh, the big mile and a half handicap at Haydock, the old Borough Cup, this one. And the market leader is Solcombe, which was so impressive when he won at the York meeting uh, last time. The handicapper was there that day as well, though, Dave. He went up at £14 for that win. Visually, it was ultra impressive. He won uh, by about four lengths or so, motoring away in the last couple of furlongs. Up in trip today, that looks absolutely ideal for him. My two worries with Solcombe, though, he's drawn 13, not ideal. I know it's a mile six, but he does start slowly. I think the connections were a bit worried about him at York last time because it was a lot of the front runners were winning the early parts of the races. Again, he falls out the traps, so he's going to be probably last early on. Uh, but he's a horse going places. But I'm not really want to be with one that goes up 14 pound and is a slow starter. So... Just for a change, I'm going to go for Yukon Glen, which I think is probably about the 50th time <laughs> I, in a row I've tipped him. I was at York for the Ebo. I actually stood next to Jim Goldie watching the race. And uh, the first thing he said after the race, I mean, bear in mind, he, he, in another stride, he'd have finished fourth. And in another furlong, he might well have won it. So um, he's got everything in his favour this time around. Stall 11 is OK. He did go up a few pounds for that run, though. But I said to Jim, where will he go next? Bear in mind, this was a fortnight ago. He said he'll be running in the old Borough Cup at Haydock. So there we go. So I'll, I'm going to stick with him as usual. Well, of course, you might need some <laughs> counselling after this one. He has won it a, a couple of years ago. You're yeah. like, we have like the commentator's curse, you know, when you're, and we, we do it in the studio on the live show on Saturdays. We say jumping really well, the clout one, you know, and all that sort mm. of thing. I remember Pat Cooney stood next to Charlie Appleby when Caribus got beaten at 101. <laughs> He's now sitting next to Goldie. More <laughs> trouble than you can find. They must see you coming, Pat, and run for cover, mustn't they? It's beginning to feel that way, I know that much. <laughs> so, like a lab rat, he's going up to be stunned yeah. again by you can Glenn. You're not going for that, are you? No, I went from him in the e-ball. He was unlucky that day, but... He's perennial an yeah, eye catch When he won this, it just weaved perfectly for him. Yeah, and he had he had three pound in hand that day. Um, I don't know. I d I'm not sure about Solcombe either. I, I do actually, I handicap that race, uh, the Melrose. We gave him 97, or I gave him 97. I think I should, maybe should have given him a bit more. He's got up a stone, I don't think I'm he got up that I'm amazed you didn't give him 100. I was, <laughs> I think I'm going to nudge up to 99 when I finish the, the show. But uh, <laughs> we run. can do that. We have the power to do that. That's You're going to run off after this? I am, yeah. So but, people now looking at the RPRs will see 105. Not, not quite that. I, I think 99, let's not get carried away. But I didn't think he got up a stone. Have you that. ever seen a horse... Of, in a Saturday handicap of that nature, the Melrose is one of the most, you know, yeah. hard, competitive, hard handicaps for the three-year-old over distance to win. He won it like he was taking the middle. Yeah, he picked it apart, but horses do that sometimes, don't they? Mm. I, I've seen it before. Uh, my selection is going to be a uh, massive price, anti as for uh, John Gosden. I was um, tempted. Were you? Yeah, I what was. What was that, man? I just, I, I think the fact that they're keeping the faith with this chap, mm. he could have been one that might have gone off somewhere this yeah. one. Uh, I, I thought it was it was too bad to be true, I think, on his return. I don't mind that. Yeah. If a horse finishes third or fourth on their return, running a biggie, on the second run you slightly worry about it maybe. When it's too bad to be true, there must have been an issue. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And it was over one mile four. I mean, he's a he's a stayer, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, his form last season over one mile six was really progressive. He won the Copper Horse Handicap at, uh, at Royal Ascot. Still pretty lightly raced for his age. Um, I mean, he's about 20 to one. I thought that was massive, to be honest. Yeah, he fair might be enough. Now, but. That, that could be one of those wrong prices, the anti postman looking at it from a value perspective. I've gone for old contact here. I say old contact, he's only a four year old, but he's had plenty of runs this season. He has, on his last two starts, he's got a third and a fifth. The third was at, at Ascot, he ran a blinder there. Um, when he was fifth last time over a mile six at Newmarket, it was a really messy race. He was only just beaten. And it's one of these horses that you look at it, it's the Barons. He maybe looks like he's a bit exposed. If you go back to his Haydock win there at the start of the season, he's also that stays really, really well. I think he's gone slightly missed by the market as well. What price have we got contact at the moment, Pat, with Bet365? Contact has been popular. He's ran about an 8-1 to one chance at the moment. There has been a few quid flying around for him during the week. Not just me, then. I thought that was going to be bigger mm. than that. OK, <laughs> all right, that's the old Borough Cup, one of the absolute Haydock highlights of the season. Where are we going to go? 
Get your comments in below. Let's switch our attention now, though, to the final big race preview on Saturday. It's only the Sprint Cup, of course, 3.35. We've heard from Adam Ryan. They're more than happy to become only the second horse. Well, he... Uh, the only all since B Friendly in 66 and 67 to win this in successive years. He's finally shown a bit of form, Pat Cooney, Emirantiana, one you like. Yeah, I do like this one. I've been waiting for this one to hit form and uh, I've had to be patient, really. But I thought last time he ran at York, I thought, yeah, fair enough. He's back in business and um, he's going to be popular. I think he's going to be vying for sort of third favourite behind Minzal and Naval Crown. But Emirati, and now the draw is, of course, paramount here. Where are they going to go and so forth? That one's drawn in 13, so we'll see how that one pans out. But I just thought, yeah, when he won this race last year, he beat Starman by a nose. And if if if, if Starman was in this race, Starman would be favourite. So I can make a plausible case out for saying Emirati is going to be very popular. As things stand at the moment, Minzal and Naval Crown are the market leaders. And perfectly solid claims, haven't they? But, you know, you look at official ratings on all of these, bear in mind there's 17 runners. There's not much between them all, really, on official ratings. So you've got some talented horses here at 20 to 1 that have only got like three or four pounds to find. And I suppose Art Power will drag them along in front in the, in the early part of the race. That's in stall one. So maybe 13 for Anna isn't a particularly good draw. But um, yeah, it's just it's a real conundrum, this race. I don't think anything, anything less than four to one the field. I don't see the public latching on to any one in particular. So I think there'll be a real good spread of business on this. And uh, with the extra place terms are available, I, I wouldn't be surprised if horses that are currently 25 to 1, for example, go up like 10 and 12 to 1. This is a proper betting race, as Pat alluded to last year when Emirati Anna got over the line. The hot pot was star, man. We've had them all over the years. Shorty's in this. This is a proper betting race. You put two, a couple yeah, of Yeah, I did. Uh, I'm happy. I put up Art Power and Castle Star. Um, I'm happy with the draw of Art Power and one. I think he's going to gonna set out to try and make all. That is going to be tough to do. But I feel like he went a bit too hard uh, when he over tried to do it last year. Yeah. Oh, and, and in the City York Stakes uh, a couple of weeks ago. But that was a really good comeback, wasn't it? He didn't. He had them all in trouble a furlong out. Were you not as impressed? Oh well, my goodness me! He went. He, he went off like a scolded cat, and he did have him in trouble. Yeah. Kinross, of course, came and beat him. He reposes. Yeah. I was tempted by Kinross. So I, I, I get to my little go on, idea man. about this. After, no, no. After you keep going on, so you've seen oh, the draw okay. now. You alluded yeah, I've to seen the draw. A castle star in seventeen. That's that's a worry for me. Is it? Yeah. You have got pace there, haven't you? I mean, you've you got Cardem in twelve. A horse yeah. that when he won earlier in the season, he went off. Do you think they're going two groups? <laughs> Probably. Um, just to annoy us. But Brad the Brief is your hope, I think, in stall 15. He ain't going to. He, he was run? always up there. Will he run? He's a proper Haydock horse, isn't it? Unsurprisingly. Yeah, but he needs cut, doesn't he? he was, he's jocked up with Kieran Fallon. Yeah, stall I know, 15. but I, I wouldn't be surprised if he came out. But well, let's say he doesn't. Yeah, all right. Let's say let's say just he goes, to help yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and anyone that's got a high stall. I get what you're saying about Brad the Brief. I think though, he yeah. might be the one. But you got yeah. uh, you got Art Power in one. You got Naval Crown in five. So uh, who else? We got Go Bears go in six. Flaming Rib in eight. So I agree. Mm. And potentially a Dubai legend who came back last time as well. But I think if you're High drawn, don't give up yet because Brad the Brief could be your toe into the race and Harry Three could be up there as well, potentially as well. Mm. Castle Star is really interesting. Yeah, isn't he it? is, yeah. Um, I, I like fresh legs at this time of year and we've only seen him once and that was a good run at the Cara. That leads me into. I've got he, one here. He travelled really. I, I haven't finished yet. Sorry. <laughs> Let me sit back. Rude. <laughs> Very rude. He travelled really well on that Sapphire Stakes that day. It was over five furlongs. Uh, I just thought he, he probably going to need it. It was his first run since he nearly beat Perfect Power in the middle park. I think this is a bit of a forgotten horse here. Uh, interesting that Fozzie Stack sends one over. He, he wouldn't send too many horses over to Britain, would he? He's been um, trying to get this bloke out, I think, isn't he, as a three-year-old? Just hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, we but that's, I mean, he's better over six as well. Um, goes on any ground. I think he's interesting. Yeah, I just went to see how the draw pans out. Uh, I think if I was having a bet each way, I'd probably halla halla half money. I've always liked this horse. You're delighted um, to hear Kevin Wright. Uh, I wasn't actually. Then. I didn't actually sit in on the interview. We've had too too much on this morning, but so you said some good things today. Well, uh, it, our viewers would have heard it by now. Basically, she, you know, they weren't too disappointed with York when she yeah. came out stall once. Really, are you know on the wings? as keep saying it. Yeah, yeah, getting yeah, cover. yeah. And she was beaten. She stank in the betting that day as well. She ran really well in the Commonwealth Cup. Commonwealth mm. Cup's got a good record towards this. Three-year-olds have actually won more uh, than the old horses in the last ten years. She just, could be one. Yeah, just completely unexposed, and she's an absolutely huge price. I mean, yeah. she's finished ahead of Go Bears Go when they last ran against each Bred other. Bred to win the race. Hello, Yeah, exactly. I think, I've got a feeling they got one eye on a return to Ascot in the Sprint Cup. 
Yeah. And she's next year's horse, I think. OK. I mean, she's only run four times. I, I just think she's not one to give up on. And she's the outsider of the field. Uh, well, we're getting enhanced places of 365, so... I couldn't find much between the market leaders, as Pat alluded to, hence it's 4-1 to one the field. It's wide open, mate, yeah. It's wide open. Yeah. So Minzal, yeah, can see it, but he's not a horse I've ever really been with. Naval Crown, has he been on the go a bit too much? Maybe at France last time he had his chance. Emirati Anna, it's very solid. Art Power, not sure he's going to be able to do that back over six, what he did at, at, at Haydock last... At, at, it was Haydock, wasn't it? No, York, sorry, York, yeah. last time. Rohan, don't know what you're going to get oh, from Rohan. He, he, Kim Ross, I was me. tempted by. Yep. Because he, he, he should, lots in his favour, course winner. And he, he'll get a good toe into race. But one has been totally missed here. I can hear Pat trembling at mm. this because it's a massive price. And first time tongue tie on for Chill Chill. Nah. Listen, we're going to play Next that door back. to my mate Castle Star. She though. was beaten less than a length in this last year. True. She, she, right. She's gone a bit off the ball since. No, she hasn't. But she ran particularly. She actually was a massive eye catcher when eighth. Yeah. She then. Went to a very, uh, it, it was good, but wasn't it? She just didn't really fire when everyone tipped her up. At Pontefract last time, Pontefract's not her track. She was a little bit wide and it's a front runner's track. I thought she ran well there. It's a listed race, mate. It doesn't matter. It just I put her spot on for this. She's shown that she can nearly win a group one in this last year. She's drawn in 16. Hayley Turner will ride her like Hayley does. No pressure whatsoever. She'll mm. be swooping late. She was just beaten under a length in this. She is what price back, Cooney? Uh, around about 4040 to 1 at the moment. And... Uh... That'll be getting a big cheer from the layers if that one hits the front with 50 yards to go. Not as big a cheer as it will in the autumn <laughs> outside, I can tell you that much. I'll but... be absolutely <laughs> shocked if that horse won. But... Andrew Balding, Hayley Turner, stall 16, massive price. I'll be absolutely shocked, but I mean, I like you, so good luck to you. There you go. I'll, uh, I'll try and reciprocate that, that love. <laughs> uh, all right, OK. There's your big race previews. OK, then. Those of you that have scrolled forward, you missed a hell of a show, but it is the time for the weekend winners. I'm going to go first, if you don't mind, and 310 at Ascot. Love these big field handicaps. Loads of my favourites running it, but I've got an up-and-comer. I thought it might be a Cambridgeshire horse. Golden Voice, Adam Farrow takes off five. Four Team Haggis, he's in seven. Loads of pace to aim at. Perfect for him. Mr Haggis thinks he's a stiff seven furlong. Mile up, I'll go for that. Ran really well at York last time when two got away from him. He'll do for me. Pretty obsessed with William Haggis horses, aren't you? Golden Voice in particular, actually. He's the yeah. new solid stone for me. Same colours, love he? it. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, solid stone. He ain't going to give £5 to Dubai Honour, is no, he? We, we but that's, we've already spoke about that. Uh, the nap for me is 145 Haydock Bayside Boy. Really? For the reasons outlined, yeah. A Don't give up on him. New, a quirky new, horse for a quirky new, tipster. New Bay over the over the autumn outperform. And he he's already beaten the short price favourites. So. You've just basically looked to see what William Buick's riding, haven't you? Uh not really my strategy, mate. Oh, okay. But, we'll believe okay. you. Uh, Pat Cooney, you've heard from us. We're going to grade one courses. Tell us where the triple is being completed. Yes, uh, man of the people. So I'm going to uh, Wolverhampton for the 440, number seven Maylar. Uh, it's had four runs for Michael Appleby. We've seen this film many, many times, hasn't he? He improves them and they keep improving. He's already won twice. Uh, he won well enough last time out. He only went up two pound. He, uh, he was slow away and I thought, oh, I don't know about that. But he finished strong and hard to the line. It's half a furlong further on Saturday. Just keep getting with these horses until they get beaten. So Mela in the opener at Wolver at 4.40. Yeah, absolutely. Your naps always go close, Pat, if they don't win. All right, so that's back them in singles, treble, Trixie, whatever one you do, they're our best hopes this Saturday. Well, sadly, that's all we've got time for here on What A Shout this Saturday. Sprint Cup action at Haydock. Loads of racing, of course. We're just getting into the autumn. It's the September month, of course. Loads of two-year-olds coming out to shine. What are you looking forward to most, apart from this weekend? Uh, what, racing was? Yeah. Um... Champions Day is my favourite meeting. Are you expecting uh, Seed Bind? Uh, <laughs> nah. No, nah, go, go, yeah. go for the arc. He's going to go for the arc. But I mean, I, I actually. It would make the Champions Day a better race if he didn't, wouldn't it? More open. Yeah, exactly. Mm, so. right. Thanks for coming back in, Wild It's mate. been great, mate, yeah. yeah we'll do right. it again sometime, we, mate. We, we really should. Pat Cooney, always a pleasure. Are we going to see you in the studio again soon, Pat? Yes, back next week. And uh, I would say to everyone, don't forget to set your alarm clocks half past one. Uh, flight line in the, the uh, Pacific Classic. This horse may be better than Bayed. He's four from four. He wins by spectacular margins. Uh, Delmar, 1.30, Sunday morning. Set your alarm clock. Just when you thought this show wasn't going to be controversial. <laughs> Could he be better than Bayed? Flight line. Lovely story on the website about that. Of course, if you want to go and check out that flight line story, don't forget there's a 
whopping members club offer out there at the moment for you. First three months, half price. Navigate your way to the members section on the website. You get unparalleled uh, action there. All the replays, of course, racing post rating spotlights. Words from myself and Robbie, if you can bear it, of course. And uh, it's all there for you. Uh, do bet responsibly this weekend. That's our MO here at the Racing Post. And, of course, at Bet365. It's been absolute pleasure being back in the seat. We'll see you next Friday, it is. Don't forget, of course, download the free must-have Racing Post app as well, Google Play Store, or indeed on the App Store itself. Loads of sport out there. For myself, Dave Orson, enjoy it.